हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई विल टेल यू अबाउट द वाइट मैटर ऑफ स्पाइनल कॉर्ड यू नो दैट वाइट मैटर इज हैविंग द ट्रैक्स सो इन टुडेज लेक्चर आई विल टेल यू ओनली अबाउट द डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द वाइट मैटर ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड सो वी विल सी द ओवरव्यू ऑफ द डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्स ऑफ द स्पाइनल कॉर्ड सो वेन एवर यू आर हैविंग द डिसेंडिंग ट्रैक्स यू हैव टू फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड that descending tract starts from the neurons and these neurons are present in the brain now what do you mean by the word brain now you know that brain includes the cortical and subcortical areas what do you mean by the cortical and subcortical areas now in this image if you will see that this is the major portion of your brain which is known as cerebrum what is that cerebrum so the cerebrum is known as cortical areas that means the neurons which are present in the cerebrum give rise to the tracts and these tracts are coming from the cortical areas that means the cerebrum of your brain but there are some areas which are also give rise to the descending tract like your part of the midbrain like other sub cortical areas like basal ganglia so these are the area other than the cerebral cortex so when you will have the brain brain word includes the cortical areas as well as the sub cortical neurons so whenever you are having any neuron you know that this is the shape of your multipolar neurons which are present in the cerebral cortex and other part of the brain and these will give rise to the axons now these axons will enter into the spinal cord and these axons are going to form tract so what is tract tract is nothing but it is a group of the nerve fibers which are having the common source of origin and they are following the common pathway to terminate at the one point of your spinal cord so whenever we are talking about the descending tract that means the tract which are going downwards inside the spinal cord they starts from the brain that means cortical and subcortical areas and they will terminate at one point of spinal cord maybe at this level this level this level or this level now what is the function of these descending tract so whenever you are talking about the descending tract ultimately they are going to control the movements of the skeletal muscles so they control the skeletal muscle activity from the cerebral cortex as well as the control from the other higher centers through the nervous system by series of neurons why we are using the word series of neurons because you have to keep this thing in mind that suppose you are having the origin of a tract that means the axon now this is the fiber which is arising from this neuron and it is going downward now this is suppose will terminate here and what is the meaning of termination the termination means there is a formation of synapse that means that this one set of neuron will make a junction with the another set of neuron clear and this is the point of the junction which is known as synapse and these are the two sets of the neuron so this is known as series of neurons so the neuron which is arising from the brain is giving a long axon this axon is passing through the spinal cord and the same neuron will never come out it will never come out it will have a series of neuron so this axon has to terminate at some part of your spinal cord that the level may be differ from this whole length and they will make a synapse with the second set of the neurons or the third set of the neurons which is known as series of the neurons clear so the first and most important thing whenever you are starting the descending tract you should know first it arises from the brain but which area of the brain either from the cerebral cortex or area other than cerebral cortex which are known as subcortical areas now the second thing is that these descending tracts are having a series of neurons that means that 
lower end of the tract or axon will terminate at one point in the spinal cord and you know that the ventral roots will come out from the spinal cord to supply the skeletal muscle. That means these descending tracts mainly control the anterior horn cells. So these tracts are motor in nature. Why motor? Because they are controlling the skeletal muscles. These descending tracts organized in the form of columns in the white matter of the spinal cord. So whenever you are reading the cross section of the spinal cord, you know that the cross section of the spinal cord is showing the centrally H-shaped gray matter. So this is the H-shaped gray matter and it is surrounded by the white matter. Now this white matter is having the three column. This is anterior column, this is lateral column and this is the posterior column. So these posterior columns of the spinal cord contain what? Descending tracts. So this is what is the important concept about the introductory part of descending tracts. Now the second thing comes is what is the anatomical organization of these descending tract in the central nervous system. So I already told you that the beginning point is the neurons which are present in the different part of the brain. It could be the cerebral cortex or subcortical areas. So what does it mean that this portion is having a neuron. Now this neuron is the source of the origin of a tract. So suppose this is the neuron and this is the axon which is going downward. So now this axon is responsible to your origin of this particular tract. So this neuron is known as first order neuron. What is that first order neuron? So this is the first thing which you have to understand here that first order neurons has the cell bodies in cerebral cortex or in subcortical areas and it this axon descend to synapse with the second order neuron. So what is the important thing is that whenever you are having the spinal cord white matter you will realize that this white matter is having the fibers of first order neurons that means these are having the fibers of the neurons which are present in the brain. So suppose in this part you are having the multiple neurons and all these neurons will give rise to the axon and these axons are making a tract which is going downward into the white matter of the spinal cord and these all neurons are known as first order neuron and these axons are known as first order neuron axons. Clear? Now where is the termination of these first order neurons? So these first order neurons terminate into the second order neuron. So this neuron is going to make a synapse with another multipolar neuron and this multipolar neuron is known as second order neuron. Clear? So this is the point of the junction. Now this second order neuron are never present in the brain. Second order neurons never present in the brain. Second order neurons are always present in the spinal cord. Now where in the spinal cord? They are present in the anterior gray column where you have the anterior horn cells. So the second order neurons are short and synapse with the third order neuron. Now what is third order neuron? So third order neurons are also present in the gray matter. Now suppose this is your gray matter. Now I am drawing the anterior horn. So these are the two anterior horn. Now in this anterior horn, this is a one set of the neuron and this neuron is receiving the longitudinal fibers which are running into the white matter. So I told you that these longitudinal fibers are coming from the brain. So these are the first order neuron fibers and these first order neuron fibers will terminate into these anterior horn cell. Now these anterior horn cell then give rise to the ventral root which is going to supply your skeletal muscle. Now there are two organization that one organization is there is a first order neuron then there is a second order neuron and ultimately from the second order neuron you are having the ventral root which is going to supply your skeletal muscle. There is a one more theory that sometimes this first order neuron fiber first terminate to a set of the neuron and then this set of the neuron terminate with this another set of the neuron. 
Now suppose this type of the organization will take place, then this is known as interneuron. What is that? Interneuron and in this case you will have first order, second order and third order neuron. So you have to understand that second and third order neurons are always present in the anterior gray column, gray matter of spinal cord while the first order neurons are present in the cerebral cortex or in subcortical areas. So this is very commonly asked question in your exam that what is the origin of descending tract. So the origin of descending tract is always from the brain and it could be from the cerebral cortex or it could be from the subcortical area. Then the second question is where is the termination of descending tract. So the termination is always in the spinal cord and this termination could be in the second order neurons or third order neuron. If you are using the word second order that means there is an interneuron is present or sometimes they are directly terminate into the second order which will come out as a output clear. So second and third order neurons are always present in the spinal cord anterior horn and first order neurons present in the brain. Now so up so now what you have to understand that these descending tract are classified in two set. One set is known as pyramidal tract another set is known as extra pyramidal tract. So this is again the question of your exam, what are the types of descending tract. So descending tract broadly classified into the two part pyramidal and extra pyramidal tract. So let's see what is the meaning of pyramidal and extra pyramidal tracts. So the pyramidal tract word first comes is from a structure which is known as pyramid and pyramid is a feature of medulla oblongata. So let's discuss about the pyramidal tract first. So some of the tract originate in the motor part of cerebral cortex. Now again my dear students I am talking first about the part of the tract which arises from the cerebral cortex because I told you there are two sets of the fibers one is from cerebral cortex another is from subcortical area. So the fibers which are arise, arises from the cerebral cortex are going to form the pyramidal tract. The fibers which arises from subcortical areas are known as extra pyramidal tract. So once you are having this word pyramidal tract in exam, it should be always come automatically in your mind that fibers of the pyramidal tract arises from the neurons which are present in the cerebral cortex. So what is the origin of pyramidal tract? Answer is cerebral cortex. And mostly the fibers comes from the motor cortex that is your precentral gyrus and the different areas of frontal lobe. Now these tracts play a major role in controlling the precise and voluntary skeletal movement. Now this is again the question of your exam that which muscles of the body controlled by the pyramidal tracts fiber answer is they control the precise and voluntary muscular movement. So what which muscles are responsible or at which joints the precise movements will take place so answer is fingers and toes. So they precisely you can write down that they control the distal limbs that means your terminal limb part where you will have the fingers and toes which are responsible for the precise skilled voluntary movements. So these tracts are grouped as a pyramidal tract. So what is pyramidal tract? Pyramidal tract is a group of the fibers which arises from cerebral cortex, motor area. Now these fiber extend from the brain to the skeletal muscle and pyramidal tracts are further divided into the two part. One is known as corticonuclear and corticospinal tract. Now in this diagram, if you will see the brain. Now in the brain, majority you are able to appreciate this area. Now this area is your cerebral cortex. So today we are talking about the origin of the fibers from different part of the brain. So the motor areas which are present here in the frontal cortex and these neurons give rise to the number of fibers and these fibers will go and form a tract which is known as pyramidal tract. Now the second thing which you have to understand that the pyramidal tract is a descending tract and pyramidal tract neurons are present in the brain 
which part of the brain cerebral cortex clear now this system of the descending fiber is known as pyramidal system why now this is again the question of your viva why we are using the word pyramidal fibers or pyramidal tract now some students reply because they comes from the pyramidal cells this is not the answer they are not uh, they are coming from the pyramidal neuron but the all fibers does not uh, having the contribution from the pyramidal neurons so what is the answer then the answer is there is a structure present in the anterior part of the medulla oblongata there is a structure present in the anterior part of medulla oblongata and that structure is referred as a pyramid and all the fibers of your pyramidal tract concentrate into the brain stem and they occupy this pyramid of your medulla oblongata that's why these fibers are known as pyramidal fibers or pyramidal tract so where is the pyramid now this is the anterior view or the ventral surface of the brain stem and here you can see that this is the elevation and this elevation is present on both the side of the midline when you will have the medulla in your hand in your dissection hall you can see that there is a elevation is present on both the side of the midline on medulla oblongata which is known as pyramid and this pyramid is occupied by the fibers which arises from cerebral cortex going downward into the spinal cord and that's why these are known as pyramidal tracts clear so it has to be noted now there is a one important line that you have already seen there are two sets of the fibers one is known as cortico spinal another is cortico nuclear i just told you that there are two sets cortico nuclear and cortico spinal so it has to be noted that cortico nuclear fiber that means the fibers which arises from the cerebral cortex will not approach the spinal cord through the pyramid but still they are considered as a part of pyramidal tract what is the simplest uh, version that you are having this question there is a pyramidal fiber and or the pyramidal tract now this pyramidal tract is having two set cortico spinal and cortico nuclear now the question comes is that which set of the fibers occupy this pyramid answer is cortico spinal not cortico nuclear but still though the cortico nuclear fibers are not passing through the pyramid but still the cortico nuclear fibers are the part of pyramidal tract why because initially i already told you the definition of tract that means the same origin and same destination so the initial part that means the origin of the all pyramidal fibers are same that means the neurons of the cerebral cortex so it is the important thing to understand that it has to be noted that the cortico nuclear fibers are confined to the brain stem they do not occupy the pyramid however they also included in the category of pyramidal system clear so what will happen here that these are the neurons and the fibers which arises will go and terminate into the different cranial nerve nuclei and that's why it is known as cortico nuclear clear nuclear includes the nuclei motor nuclei of different cranial nerve and fibers which starts from the brain that means the cerebral cortex and if they will end into the spinal cord they are known as cortico spinal so cortico nuclear fibers cortico spinal fibers and cortico spinal fibers occupy the pyramid of medulla oblongata so the pathway consists of the two set of the motor neuron in the pyramidal tract they are now referred as a upper and lower motor neuron so this is again very very important question of your exam what do you mean by the upper and lower motor neurons so my dear friends pyramidal tract is generally having the two sets of the neurons one set is present here in your cerebral cortex and i told you the second set is present in the cross section of your spinal cord that means in the anterior horn so if you will draw the cross section what you are able to understand here that this is the cross section and in this cross section you are having the anterior horn cells which are here clear 
Now what will happen? That these fibers will give rise to the exon. Now this exon will go downward and ultimately it will, it will terminate here. Clear? So this fiber is known as first order neuron. And these fibers of anterior horn cells are known as second order neuron. Clear? So what will happen here that these sets are known as upper motor neuron and these sets of the neurons are known as lower motor neuron. So again my question is where will you find the lower motor neuron? Answer is anterior horn of gray matter. Where you will find upper motor neuron? Answer is cerebral cortex or in the brain. Clear? So now we'll move to the next part is the extra pyramidal. I told you that the pyramidal fibers arises from the neurons of cerebral cortex. But brain is having other parts also and these other parts will give rise to the extra pyramidal fibers. So the term extra pyramidal fibers refer to the descending tract other than the corticospinal. Now this word is important other than corticospinal. That means the fibers which are arising from the brain except cerebral cortex. So these are also motor in nature but obviously all the descending fibers are going to affect the output from the anterior horn cells. That means they are directly or indirectly going to uh, modify your motor output. So they are also motor in nature and they play important role in integration for the regulation of the muscular movement and the tone of your muscles. Clear? So the difference between the pyramidal and extra pyramidal is that pyramidal tracts are mainly involved in the controlling of fine and skilled movement of your distal fingers, uh, the, your distal limb part like fingers and the toes. But these extra pyramidal are helpful in maintain the tone of the muscle and regulate the different movements of the muscle. So these descending fibers originate mainly from the area other than the cerebral cortex that means subcortical region. Now what do you mean by the subcortical region like corpus striatum, reticular nuclei, vestibular nuclei, olivary nuclei, red nucleus. So these all are the subcortical area. So in this image if you can see that this is your cortical area and this is your subcortical area. So in this subcortical area you are having the basal ganglia, corpus striatum, reticular nuclei, you have vestibular nuclei, you will have olivary nuclei, you will have red nucleus. So these all areas below the cortex are known as subcortical area but these are all the part of the brain. So brain are divide, is having, the brain is having two part, cortical and subcortical. So this part will give rise to the pyramidal and this subcortical area give rise to the extra pyramidal tracts. So these tracts are grouped as extra pyramidal which arises from the area other than cerebral cortex. So at the end you should know this classification which is again the question of your exam classify the tracts. So you have to first broadly classify pyramidal and extra pyramidal. In pyramidal you will have the fibers arising from the cortex going into the spinal cord. So they are known as corticospinal tract which are the major fiber. But the fibers which starts from the cerebral cortex and end into the cranial nuclei which are present in the brain stem. So they are known as corticonuclear fiber or they are also termed as corticobulbar fiber. Then you will have the second set of the fibers are known as extra pyramidal. That means the fibers which are coming other than the cerebral cortex. So they are coming from the tectum of midbrain, tectospinal, red nucleus of midbrain, rubrospinal, vestibular nuclei, vestibulospinal, olivospinal and reticulospinal tracts. Clear? So this classification should always be there in your mind that descending tracts are classified into the pyramidal and extra pyramidal tract. What is the meaning of pyramidal? The fibers which are coming from the cerebral cortex. What do you mean by the extra pyramidal? The fibers which are coming from the brain but not from the cerebral cortex. So what are the other areas of the brain which give rise to the tracts? Like midbrain, you have tectospinal, rubrospinal, then from vestibular nuclei, from olivary nuclei, from reticular nuclei, clear? Like this. 
So now we will discuss very brief about the upper and lower motor neurons. So upper motor neurons are situated into the cerebral cortex. So this is the first question. That means these are the supraspinal neurons. The neurons which are present above the spinal cord. So this is the junction of the spinal cord and medulla oblongata. So wherever you will have such kind of the neurons, either in the cortex, which will give rise to the pyramidal tract, or in the, in the subcortical areas, those will give rise to the extra pyramidal tract. Both are known as upper motor neurons. So upper motor neurons are present in the brain, in case of the pyramidal tract, in the cerebral cortex, in case of extra pyramidal tract, in subcortical areas. But ultimately, they all are in supraspinal region. So these neurons send their exon to the different cranial nerve nuclei. Now, if you are having this word cranial nerve nuclei, that means we are talking about corticonuclear component of pyramidal fibers. So they are the motor neurons of the cranial nerve. And you know that cranial nerve motor neurons are present in the brain stem. So where is the termination of corticonuclear fibers? Brain stem. Where is the termination of corticospinal fibers? Spinal cord. Through the corticonuclear fibers. The axons of the upper motor neurons also project into the anterior horn cells. Then we are talking about the corticospinal tracts. And we are also talking about the extra pyramidal fibers, which are also coming from your subcortical region. Clear? So upper motor neurons, how will you define upper motor neurons? Upper motor neurons define as a neurons which are present in the different part of the brain and they give rise to the origin of pyramidal and extra pyramidal tract. Upper motor neuron terminates into the either brain stem, then we are talking about the motor nuclei. And uh, if they are terminated in, in, into the anterior horn of spinal cord, then you are talking about the pyramidal and extra pyramidal fibers. Now, what do you mean by the lower motor neuron? So my dear students, you have to first understand that lower motor neurons are the second order neuron and upper motor neurons are the first order neuron because they are giving the origin to the tract. And the lower motor neurons are receiving those tracts and they are synapsing with the descending fibers. So I told you that the fibers are terminating at two places. What are these first places? Brain stem and second place is spinal cord. So this is the first concept which you have to understand that upper motor neuron fibers terminate at two places, either in the brain stem or in the spinal cord. If they are terminating in the brain stem, that means they are terminating on the motor nuclei and they are always corticonuclear fibers of your pyramidal group. But if they are terminating in the spinal cord, then it could be the corticospinal or it could be extra pyramidal fibers. Clear? So now the concept is that the second order neurons that means the neurons which are receiving the upper motor could be present in the brain stem or they could be present in the spinal cord. So anterior horn nuclei are now named as lower motor neuron and motor nuclei of the cranial nerves which are present in the brain stem also uh, similar to the lower motor neurons of spinal cord. So this is the first and important concept about the lower motor neuron. So the lower motor neurons are situated in the brain stem and in the spinal cord. Now, see, there should be no confusion about the lower motor neuron. What do you mean by the lower motor neuron? Lower motor neuron means the neurons which are synapsing with the fibers of upper motor neuron. Now we know that upper motor neuron fibers terminate at two places, in the brain stem and in the spinal cord. Where in the brain stem? Answer is motor nuclei of cranial nerves. So the lower motor neurons of brain stem are actually the neurons of the cranial nerve motor nuclei. Which nuclei? Motor nuclei, not sensory nuclei. It has to be the motor nucleus. Clear? And the second thing is the 
other part of the fibers which are known as corticospinal fibers or the extra pyramidal fibers they are descending into the spinal cord and they are terminating in the spinal cord and those neurons which are synapsing with those fibers are present in the anterior horn of the spinal cord so anterior horn nuclei of spinal cord functionally similar to the motor cranial nerve neurons of brain stem why because they both are receiving the upper motor neuron fibers or they are synapsing with the descending tracts of spinal cord it should be very clear in your mind so the axons of these neurons then further innervate the skeletal muscle so now the important thing is upper motor never directly innervate the skeletal muscle they either affect the motor nuclei of cranial nerve or they will either affect the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord and we know that ventral roots of the spinal cord which are the motor output will supply the skeletal muscle clear the lower motor neurons receive impulses from the pyramidal tract and these impulses are then transmit to the skeletal muscle so this question asked so many time in your exam that what is the location of upper and lower motor neuron and what is the difference so the location is that upper motor neurons are present in the different part of the brain and lower motor neurons are present only at two places one is the brain stem and second is the spinal cord in brain stem if you are talking about the lower motor neuron it has to be only the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves and if you are talking about the spinal cord anterior horn cells are the lower motor neuron thus the pyramidal system control the voluntary movement how the pyramidal system is descending downward and they are controlling the motor nuclei of cranial nerve as well as anterior horn cells now you are having one more term is final common pathway now what do you mean by final common pathway the axons of the motor neuron situated in the anterior gray column of the spinal cord are known as final common pathway what does it mean that this is the ventral or you can say anterior horn now in this ventral or anterior horn you are having the anterior horn cells and these anterior horn cells will give rise to the ventral root or motor output now this motor output is also known as final common pathway why you are using the word final because this motor output comes out after multiple influences and modulation so these neurons send axon to innervate the skeletal muscle through the anterior root and these motor neurons are the lower motor neuron so i have told you this that lower motor neurons are present in the anterior horns or in the motor nuclei of cranial nerve and they constitute the final common pathway to the muscle why they are known as co final common pathway because the neurons which are present here in the anterior horn constantly bombarded now this word is important that they constantly influenced or bombarded by the nerve impulses from all the descending tract all the descending tract irrespective their pyramidal or extra pyramidal so the output will come out after the multiple influences and these influences comes from the pyramidal as well as from the extra pyramidal tract so all these both the tract influences these motor neurons so that that what will happen the output which is coming out is highly refined output so this is the important line to understand why they are known as final common pathway the another if, uh, important thing is that not only the descending tract they are also influenced by the ascending fibers or sensory fibers that means the fibers which are entering through the dorsal root also giving the collateral to influence this motor output so this is the question of your exam what do you mean by the final common pathway or output of the spinal cord you have to reply in one line that anterior horn cells of the spinal cord are modulated their output is influenced or modified by multiple inputs and what is the source of input all the pyramidal and extra pyramidal fibers and ascending fibers for the sensory fibers so that's why you have to understand that the upper motor neuron provide numerous separate pathway and these pathway influences the final motor activity coming out from the lower motor neuron clear 
Now we will talk about the functions of each and every tract in very brief because we are not discussing each and every tract in detail. So what is the function of first your corticospinal? I already told you that it controls the skilled fine movement of the distal part of the limbs, particularly I told you fingers and the toes. Now what is the function of reticulospinal? Now reticulospinal tract may facilitate or inhibit the activity of alpha and gamma motor neuron. That means again they are influencing the anterior horn cells and therefore it facilitate or inhibit the voluntary movements and reflex action. The second is tactospinal. Now you know that tectum is a part of the midbrain and this is mainly uh, related with the postural control with your visual reflexes. So whatever the visual stimuli or your visual stimulus is there, it is helpful to maintain the posture. Then you will have rubrospinal or the fibers arises from the red nucleus of midbrain. They facilitate the activity of the flexors and inhibit the activity of extensors. And the vestibulospinals are having the reverse action of the rubrospinal. So what is the action of rubrospinal? They are facilitate the activity of flexors and inhibit the extensors and vestibulospinal inhibit the flexors and facilitate the extensors. Clear? So this is what is the functions of pyramidal and extrapyramidal tract in very brief. So now we'll come to the, again, the introductory part of the clinical anatomy. Again, I'm not going in the detail. So the important thing which you have to understand that whenever there is a lesion in upper motor neuron, now you will have this very commonly asked question, UMN lesions. Now I told you, what do you mean by upper motor neuron? Neurons which are present in the cortical as well as subcortical areas, that means the neurons of the brain. So whenever there is upper motor neuron lesion, there may be the affection of the pyramidal as well as extra pyramidal tracts. Both the tracts are going to affect, but the symptoms are very different. So theoretically, you may find there is a restricted lesions of the tract which are arising from the cerebral cortex and the lesions or the tracts which are arising from subcortical area. But generally you will find the mix of the symptoms. The pure symptoms are very rare. So the lesions restricted to the corticospinal or the pyramidal tract, if occurs, what is the effect in such upper motor neuron lesion? Patient is having Babinski sign present. Now see, you always keep this thing in mind. We are using the word present and absent, not positive and negative. It is always present or absent. We cannot use the word positive and negative in case of Babinski sign. The superficial abdominal reflexes are absent. The cremastic reflex is also absent and there is a loss of performance of the fine skilled movement because you know that the pyramidal tract control the distal part of your limbs. Now, what do you mean by the Babinski sign is present? Now, this question has been asked so many times in your exam. What is Babinski sign and what do you mean by its presence and absent? So the first thing is that when the great toe be become dorsi flexed and other toes fan out in response on the stretching along the lateral border of the sole of the foot. And if such response is seen, then you are labeling at presence of Babinski sign. Now see, this is your sole. Now where is the lateral border? Now this is the lateral border. So you have to use the clinical hammer and if you will do the stretching along the lateral border in such a direction, what is the response if there is a lesion of corticospinal tract. What is the effect you are able to see? The effect is that the great toe is showing the dorsiflexion and remaining toe will fan out or stretching out. Clear? So this is showing the Babinski sign presence. Now what is the normal response? In you and me, in normal adult person, if you are doing such a stretch, a stretching, what will happen? All the five toes will go downward. That means the normal response is plantar flexion. So what is the normal response in a individual, in an adult, you will find plantar flexion of all the toes when you are stretching along the lateral border of the sole. So if I will do the stretching on the lateral border, I will find all the five toes are going towards the ground. That means there is a plantar flexion. But if there is a corticospinal lesion, Rather than plantar flexion, you will find that great toe is showing the dorsiflexion. So this is known as absence of the Babinski sign, which is a normal phenomena 
and this is known as presence of Bavinsky sign which is an abnormal phenomenon. Now the Bavinsky sign is a normal in case of the life of your first year of age. So up to the one year presence of Bavinsky sign is a normal phenomenon. Clear? So this is the question of your exam that Bavinsky sign is a normal phenomena in an adult answer is no. But in an infant it is a normal phenomena. Why? Because in the no, uh, your uh, infant up to the age of one year the corticospinal tract are not myelinated. Now this word is important they are not myelinated. So this question has been asked so many times in your exam. Why Bavinsky sign is seen in a child less than one year answer is because the pyramidal tracts are not myelinated. So when you will do the stretching along the lateral border of the sole, the great toe will show the dorsiflexion in that infant. So this is the important thing that the explanation of the presence of Bavinsky sign in corticospinal tract lesion occurs. Why? The corticospinal lesion influences the other descending tract on the toes become apparent. What, does, what, what, is the, what is happening? That there are two sets of the fibers, pyramidal and extrapyramidal. So the pyramidal tract has been cut. There is a lesion in the pyramidal tract. So the influence of other tract, that means extrapyramidal tract is now pronounced. So because the influence of the other descending tracts on the toe become more apparent, more pronounced, so what will happen? There is a such kind of the response is seen that when you will do the stretching along the lateral border, it will show the dorsiflexion of great toe, which should be not there in a normal adult person. Now, what should be the classical symptoms is seen in case of extrapyramidal lesion of upper motor neuron. So, there is a severe paralysis occurs. There is no muscular atrophy other than the disuse. There should be a spasticity or there should be a hypertonicity of the muscles is there. There is a exaggerated deep muscular reflexes and there is a clasp knife reaction is seen. So there are four classical symptoms are seen in the extrapyramidal tract lesion and there are some classical features of the pyramidal tract lesion but they both are upper motor neuron. So if you will have upper motor neuron lesion you have to classify in the two part clinical features due to pyramidal tract lesion and clinical features due to extrapyramidal tract lesion. So Bavinsky sign is presents only in the case of the pyramidal tract lesion. Clear? So now at the end of this session, I hope it is very clear to you what do you mean by the pyramidal and extrapyramidal tract? What is the origin of pyramidal tract? What is the origin of extrapyramidal tract? How to define the upper motor neuron lesion? How will you define the lower motor neuron? And the important thing which you have to understand that lower motor neurons are not only present in the spinal cord, but they are also present in the cranial low motor nuclei, which is present in the brain stem. So this is all for the session. Thank you.